Hi guys, this is a video uh, of me making a flexible camera mount. Uh, you're probably wondering what a flexible camera mount is. Well, I had a situation where I needed to get my camcorder over uh, the viewing glass in my sandblaster. And on a standard tripod, that doesn't work. The tripod can get close, but when you factor in the um, the angle of the camera looking down through the glass you can only see to the back portion of the cabinet instead of straight down in so I need something w with basically a uh, gooseneck configuration to allow the camera to bend uh, to that angle plus I needed something whenever I'm doing videos on the lathe um, the metal, my metal lathe when I'm doing machine work so the camera can get right into um, looking down, right down to the chuck in the lathe because I don't have anyone to hold the camera for me so this will give me a good view and it will be a, a very steady view and here's what I came up with uh, this is the camera mount, it's flexible and one end goes on the tripod uh, mounting plate and the other one goes in the bottom of the camera and it allows you to flex your camera around to many angles and I can add extensions to this too depending on the application but um, it allows the camera to be adjusted and then it can go allow the camera to be offset from the tripod several several inches uh, say if you're doing work on a a car or you know a video of a, you know, a car or working on a bike or something you could adjust this exactly where you need it to be and it works really good. I've used it already for a couple of videos on my vapor blasting and sand blasting uh, setups and it works excellent. I'm real happy with it. So this video will show you how I machine this. Uh, it's kind of a longer video but um, I think it's interesting. Machine work is interesting, you know, building stuff. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. have it set up a couple parallels to the heights I want. And here's the plates for my camera mount. They're aluminum, pretty easy to machine, but still they're you know they're um, still tough enough to do what I need to do.
I always tap these little ones by hand because these, uh, these taps, especially four foot taps, there's not a whole lot of material in them. I just put a little bit of down pressure on the quill. This, this is one's really nice and sharp. I have a few of them that are getting dull and you never know if the damn thing's going to break whenever you go to tap a hole. By the way, this is Safe Tap. It's called Safe Tap Plus. I get it from uh, uh, out of MSC. clearance hole. See the spiral flutes if it decides to focus, and it's kind of like looks like a drill bed, only has a blunt end on it, and it has several flutes on it, and especially made for making a true round hole, high tolerance, uh, close tolerance, one quarter or e sides in 250 thousandths. when you're running the reamers, you run at half the speed of a drill and twice the feed. size and this pin doesn't just slide in. I wouldn't do good. Nope, it would be a good press fit. Since I'm only doing 35 thousandths, you're going to cheat here a little bit. I'm going to put the end mill right in the drill chuck. This isn't advised for doing any kind of heavy work, but since I'm only doing 35 thousandths, it's fine. People can complain about it if they want. I don't care. I've been doing it for ever now. All right. So I got my I have my uh, quill stop set. Touch off my part. The end mill is now contacting the part. Now I have my Z0. Set my Z0 and crank the table at 30, 35 thousandths. Feed down. And what that's for is this little tiny pin. Little tiny pin here has a, a lip on it that's 35 thousandths thick and goes down to the uh, all right, that's 516th diameter goes down 35 thousandths. That's what I did there. It's kind of sticky. Hardened pin in that chuck. Now I do this now and again. A very, very, very light press fitting or starting of it. A bushing or a bearing. When your arbor press isn't accurate, just to get you a start, but I would not advise this for any kind of heavy duty pressing. I 
like that. And see how that pressed it right down? Now the top of that flange is flush and the, the pin still sticks up the top. Okay, that's done. running out a little bit, I'm going to check it here. That looks alright. tab for a tapered point. And all it is is a guide for my tap so that it doesn't wobble around whenever I'm tapping it. See, I put the tap there like that. Just a little bit. And this guide comes down on the top. You can see it right there. I'm coming down the top. That does is that make sure it's pointing straight up and down as a guide for to know that the tap is going into the hole straight. And you don't want to put the tap into the hole crooked. So I put some tapping fluid on there. Use a crust wrench. And uh, pipe taps take a little bit more pressure because they are tapered. They really start taking a lot of material as they go down. As I go along, I have to take this out and feel if this thing has made enough threads yet. You always got to be careful of galling with aluminum. Make sure you keep it lubricated. relatively new tap too so it's not bad. I've had some really really difficult times with pipe taps trying to run through steel. You need a, a lot of torque to, to get them to, to cut those cut those threads when you're finishing them up. So this is you see the threads. There, it's focused now. See the threads in there. 14 threads per inch. 
and uh, that will hold the fitting in place. I don't like to deburr them too much on these thin parts because I only have a few threads in there. I don't want to end up with one thread left in the part. It's not real strong that way. But uh, yeah, it leaves a nice finish, shiny. Aluminum, like I said, is nice to work with. There's really no risk of anything happening here. No, just enough to take the sharp edges off the holes. trim this threaded piece here off to the thickness of that adapter plate. Let's trim it off in here real quick. And it's not running perfect, but it's close enough. Okay. I'm going to end about 300 thousandths off that shoulder. Now it's tough to see. about 250 so it's nothing critical but okay I'll try to put it only gives you about five threads put in there but that's enough I mean the camera doesn't weigh you know 50 pounds or anything okay I had to go off camera for a minute to swear at this thing I had to clean these threads out I couldn't get this uh, I didn't bevel these threads and I had to go through and chase those threads with that tap again just a little bit to clean clean any burrs off but you see now it goes in pretty well I couldn't get that thing to start so but it's pretty much that worked out really well it tightens up nice it's not going to go anywhere 
Put it over here on the middle real quick and just tighten it up. Snug it up. And as you'll see here, like I said before, this is what I wanted. Notice this thread doesn't stick out of the top. Well, maybe about five thousandths is all it feels, but it's pretty flush with it's not going to interfere with my setup. Uh, these are pretty much done except for snapping the line in place. And uh, I'll snap that and show you what it looks like, and then uh, show you how it works with the camera. Okay, here's what it it came out. Uh, there's my tripod, my um, ultra not good tripod, but you know. Um, but here's the. Well, I'll take it out of here and show you the uh, mount that I came up with. And there's the shoe that goes into the uh, into this part here. It snaps in place. Um, here's the the upper mounting plate, the bottom mounting plate, the adapter plate that mounts to that uh, that plastic black plastic piece here with the the thumb screw, the wing screw at the bottom. Is actually a piece that screws in the bottom of my camera. And that's the one that has the quarter twenty thread in it down there. And you see the alignment pin that would usually go into a camera. This top plate has the alignment pin I put in, and then a blind hole where you put the um, where you put this brass thumb screw. It goes up through. If I can find it here, <laughs> okay, right there. It goes up through there and that screws in the bottom of the camera. It's kind of tough to show you this because I only have one camera so I can't assemble it and show you why I'm assembling it because, well, you know why. Okay, but uh, that allows me to see over uh, like my sandblaster or different views that I couldn't ordinarily do with a, a tripod and it's working out pretty well. I'll grab a mirror and um, you know, show you what this looks like with the camera on it, um, and I'll give you a little bit better idea of what it's capable of. All right, here's a different perspective on this flexible mount, and um, I will try to mount the camera on here while keeping everything in the center of the viewfinder. It's not real easy, but here's the plate right here. It's going to sit on right there and then that little brass screw will screw up into the bottom of the camcorder and the pin will keep it from rotating on you okay see if I can do this keep everything lined up okay and I just wind that little screw in the bottom of the camera and just snug it up a little bit it doesn't have to be super tight and there's the camera set on there now this thing is really sturdy, this flexible mount. No, it's a little bit of shaking. That's not, um, that's not because of this flexible mount. This could actually probably be extended another foot or so without it being, uh, uh, you know, without it being unstable. The weak point I have here is my tripod. It's not a real high quality tripod. This is another example of my uh, flexible mount setup on a tripod. Uh, this dirty view you're seeing right now is down inside my uh, sandblasting cabinet. And this wouldn't have been possible with just a tripod. I needed some sort of uh, way to get this over the glass and to be able to view, uh, uh, to demonstrate my sandblasting. Now being I'm a taller person, I built a sandblaster, I custom built it to be fairly tall so it didn't hurt my back because sometimes you'll spend uh, you know several hours cleaning parts in one of these things off and on during the day and it uh, it's difficult so this is a taller setup and I needed a taller tripod with the extension on it with flexible extension and this is just kind of another demonstration to let you know how this camera can be manipulated now to go to any angle I need it and to be able to look down in the glass um, of course, this isn't just useful for sandblasters. Uh, I made this for working on any equipment or getting into a tight space. Say if you're doing a demonstration 
uh, working on a car engine or you know tuning something you could get the camera right underneath the hood where you couldn't do that with a tripod or if you didn't have someone who was standing there next to you recording everything you could do a very very stable uh, video shoot and have you know come up with good video quality that's not shaky at all the only time it's shaky is when you're moving it um, but you know that can be edited out so as you can see here if I have a part inside and I start sandblasting it's gonna be in full view and I think it'll work out really good now I'll be putting up some videos of me doing um, sandblasting and vapor blasting so look for those videos in the near future and thanks for watching